You guys, you just heard the trailer for a little movie called 976 Evil. Uh, came out in 1988. IMDb gives us a 5.2, which is, by the way, probably Sam Ritter's highest. Yes, no, for I, sure. No, I bet uh, Fright Night was Fright Night's got to be a solid. It's got to be I'd a say seven. seven. I'd say seven. Yeah. Uh, it was directed by a guy named, I don't know if you know this, uh, Robert England. Now, is he Freddy Krueger? He is the- Freddy Krueger. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Uh, his dir- directorial debut, he, debut, debut. He only has three directorial credits: this, an episode of Freddy's Nightmares, and the 2008 movie called Killer Pad. Which, by the way, Killer Pad is kind of funny. 2008, it was a horror comedy where a couple of dudes move into this sweet place and like they want to party, but the devil shows up, and the devil is hot. And it's like we're Did except we for do there was that one on the podcast. I don't think we've done that in the podcast, but I remember watching that as a chubby kid. I mean, I mean, this was, I mean, I was a, I was a man, but I remember one time they showed the chubby guy on that and he had like, he had like a uh, saran wrap wrapped around his gut. And I, and I remember thinking, yeah, that maybe was that's an a old, good idea. Yeah. That's an old, uh, I've never tried that. It's about sweating out the fat. Well, I feel like it was about keeping the love handles in, which I could do for or that, or you get a corset for that. <laughs> oh no. No, let's leave those to women because those look like right, you can't get some breathe. Saran wrap. It looks like you that. can't breathe in the. I corset. thought it was like just working off the sweat. It could like be your flesh sweats underneath. No, but he, all. but but he, he's like, oh look, and he takes his shirt off, and I'm like, is that Saran wrap around his gut? All right, cool, cool, whatever, good. Yeah, good for him. Uh, it was written by a guy named Rhett Topham. Five writing credits for this guy. Wrote the screenplay for Trick or Treat, 1986. Trick or Treat. Uh, hi bye hi bye. oh no no we all we all love that i freaking love we all that. love the ragman in in everything that the ragman ever does okay let's be real he did some freddy's nightmare episode uh freddy's nightmares episodes he also did 976 evil 2 by the way i watched 976 evil 2 since we last met how was that it how was, was actually sam pretty Ritter good no <laughs> sam ritter S- sam, sam ritter, ritter was it? not in that so it's it's it was a whole different thing but it was still kind of good it was also written by by a guy named Brian Helgland. Twenty seven writing credits on IMDb credit for this movie. It just has written by for this one, but he does have some good ones. He's got some tales from the crypt, assassins with Sly Stallone and Antonio Banderas. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Conspiracy theory with racist Millie Gibson, payback, a Knight's Tale, and some other stuff that was pretty decent. Uh, this movie stars Sam Ritter, yes, as Stephen Godfrey's his hoax. Jim Metzler is Marty. Uh, let's see. Let's go down. Uh, uh, let's see. Sandy Dennis is Aunt Lucy. And uh, yeah, she was something else, right? She was crazy in this. I liked it a lot. I, li- I liked her a lot in this. I kept saying to myself when I was watching, what's her name? Aunt Judy? <laughs> Aunt Lucy. Uh, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's all the same. I don't think it, I don't think the name matters much. I know. But for whatever w- weird reason, every time she walked in the room, I was like, she was always Aunt like, I'm going to paddle you, boy. And I'm just like, wow, she's old school. Better watch out. She was old school. Hoax, played by Stephen Godfrey, is a young man in high school. He's a sweet kid, if not a huge, complete nerd with big social issues. Um, However, he lives with his overbearing, kitschy mother, like with all the makeup and the wigs and dressed like nobody dresses. Maybe they did. Dressed like tomorrow will never come again. She's a Christian authoritarian who keeps hoax on a short leash and isn't afraid to use corporal punishment to keep hoax on the straight and narrow. Spike, on the other hand, is a badass. Harley driving, hard drinking, gambling, womanizing cousin of hoax. He lives in an apartment above the garage over hoax's mother's place. He goes to the same high school as hoax and Spike is hoax's hero. Like straight up. Who wouldn't be? No, right? He's cool. Dude, I'm happy with the... He's got an apartment away from everyone else. Jesus. Uh, Kind of. I love it. Except for there is a kind of like a male... Like, what do we call it? You know when you go to the bank? Sorry, uh, the bank, and you've got like... You put your thing in and it sucks it up. Yeah, what do you call that? I don't know, but he has one... Sucks a lot? But he's got one of those... uh, I just feel like it's 1988. A good way to communicate with your cousin. Put little notes in there and stuff it up there and it shows up in his apartment. Uh, anyways, uh, they have a loving relationship, Spike and Hoax, even if Spike is a little bit embarrassed that his younger cousin's personality sucks and his style sucks, and basically most things about him are nerdy. But Spike will help Hoax out with the bullies if he happens to be around when the swirlies are going down. They have a cool I love messaging system. Okay, I already talked about that. Anyhow, Spike comes across a magazine 
an insert card in a magazine advertising 976 evil a number you can call and get your horoscope not your horoscope your horror horror scope scope. we're talking overkill style yeah that's what i'm horror scope exactly spike calls it and it gives him some very specific fortunes fortunes that he takes the advice of immediately and it works out in his favor um straight up like if you want it take it so he goes and steals some of his aunt's money stuff like that however there comes a point where it tells him to take to to shoplift from his uh, motorcycle guy who helps him out he's like bro i can't do that bro i'm too good to steal from your mom and pop shop i'm not going to steal these gloves and he kind of loses interest in it however and those were some sweet gloves though you well, gotta admit that i mean it's i like- guess they were they Jesus. were cut off. They were cut off, so it would show you. Love your, those. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I mean, and he thought about it. He was like, <laughs> oh, God, he did it. He walked out, but walked nice back gloves. in and, and, and returned. These are like Motley Crue. But gloves. you can't mess with a dude who's fixing your 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 bike, man. You can't do that. I mean, he's probably the, the dude was a super nice guy, but it's the only thing that stopped him from that was it didn't say crew. <laughs> if it said crew, it he would be crew, gone. Like, <laughs> he would be gone. See ya. <laughs> However, hoax comes into possession of the card and calls the number. And unlike Spike, though he takes the advice of the recording on the phone and begins to carry out any and all advice the card gives him, he will not give this up. He actually quickly learns the true nature of the phone line and invites it into himself. He goes through some rituals, and even though the consequences were dire, Hoax isn't satisfied until he uses the card to get back at those who he feels has wronged him. Not only that, but he decides to take it further to claim more than even he felt that he was owed. What is the true nature of 976 evil? Will a hoax go too far? Did these guys actually go to school in the same building as class of 1984, by the way? Oh, that's interesting. Find out by watching 976 evil from 1988. Shane, what would you think? Well, uh, for my first question would be that dude that is like running the telemarketing. Yeah, sure. I've seen he's a character actor. Dude, I've seen him in, in a everything. billion yes. movies. Yeah, yeah. Do you know his name? No, I don't know his name. Because I was like, that dude, I've seen a billion goddamn Sure, times. of course, of course. And he's running this bizarre market. 976 office. He's got the fat lady doing the sex thing. He's got the sports bet guy. He's got the He uh, opens up the door to the 976 evil cobwebs everywhere. Uh, Jesus, we haven't been in here forever. But maybe there's a more sinister reason. Right. Why there was to throw people off. The I track. enjoyed this movie. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fine. It was perfectly fine. Sure. I enjoyed it. I really like Stephen Jeffries. I think he's fantastic. Not Sam Ritter. Not Sam Ritter. I mean, well, Sam Ritter, whatever he wants to go sure. by. But I love seeing that dude no, in same, movies. Same. He was great in uh, Fright Night. He was great in this. But he, I feel like he plays one role. I yeah. feel like I feel like this was very uh, it was subdued, but it was still Evil Ed from Friday. Is this before or after? Friday it's after. Night? It's after. Yeah. 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 So he's just we need that creepy little dude to sure. do what he does. Of course. Okay. And he could have made a career of it. He really. And could've. yet he changed. He changed the lanes changed, and decided to course. make a career out of something. Or else. maybe he didn't. Maybe he does uh, the the Fright Night character in a lot of his films. I'll be so, honest yeah. with you. He be changed and he changed lanes on his career, and maybe I don't know. Maybe he made a billion dollars off it. Who and knows? how great would it be if he comes back and goes, Sam Ritter is? I feel like that would be why a wouldn't different you let convention that, dude, that I would be at. Why wouldn't you let that dude be a vampire in a movie? Oh, I know, I know. I don't know. He was good in this. For Christ's sakes, let that man be. Let Stephen Jeffries be a vampire in a fucking kickass. Antonio Bandez, 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 yeah, get him in a vampire movie. Sure, see what he does. He'll, he'll do here. It. Here's what I'll say about Stephen Jeffries. So, the, okay, so first I'm going to start by saying I just watched Into the Darkness, like I mentioned in the intro, part right. two, and they they interviewed Robert England about it, and they were like, "Man, this movie is a what is going on? Sorry, they're like this this movie would have been so much better hadn't had it been." for had it not been for the um cutting and all the shit that was going on with the with the studios at the time but here's the thing robert england you've got your 80s feel right. you got your 80s look you got the the 80s like special effects and they were good you know i mean oh, all yeah. that stuff there was, there was even some poltergeisty this. stuff in yeah. that towards the end um 
Ain't nothing wrong with this movie. Yeah, but you saw, but but I mean, could it have been better? Of course, it could. Have, every movie movie could be better. But the thing is, is Robert England kind of shoot this off as like a kind of a failure. And I'm like, nah, bro. I like this movie. Now he loves it, though, right? He goes to the conventions and goes, ah, yeah, I love that. Do you think Robert England goes to conventions and anybody brings up uh, 976 Evil? No. I guarantee it. Well, maybe. I guarantee but he's, every goddamn he's horror still nerd that walks up, up goes, I cannot say, what was it like to wear the, the, the sharp uh, hand Of glove. course, of course. Yeah. So they go, I've got to come in with some 976 Evil. Stephen Jeffries in this, though. Here's the thing. He is the quintessential 80s nerd. There's no doubt about it. There's nobody. You can't think of somebody who could have played it better than him. I don't right. think. Other than the guys from uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Well, but, like, but, <laughs> but they would have been the same level. Right. I feel like that Stephen Jeffries is probably the best type of uh, person to play this kind of a role. But the thing is, is he turned, man. There was a point in the movie where it's like, Mama, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And then he went kind of crazy. And then he totally, his, his character toned it down and got super like evil even the makeup and stuff like that was cool yeah i thought it was um is hoax an actual are we worried about hoax just being a pure dude or and and just um, and misunderstood or is he an actual evil person on the inside the whole time because when or he, when he took that revenge come up and well was that some kind of gay porn joke no i'm saying does he get his come up and he may or may not mama Especially Mama, you've been fucking with me for years. Yeah, no, no, no. But, but what I'm saying is, you've got all this stuff, and like even Spike's like, eh, "F this, I don't need this shit." But this evil little heart has been maligned too many times, right? And maybe I'm gonna point, I'm, I'm gonna do some evil shit. Or maybe. And he does, and he finds out there. There's some things he does because he can't get the girl, or he can't do this, where the where the consequences are dire. You know what the devil can do? What? He can give you all those things. That's more. exactly. So he's pumped about it. I don't know, man. Here's the thing. I loved this movie. Yeah, but, I do too. But I feel like it, it comes a lot from the nostalgia of the time, the the look and feel of the movie, the 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 theater. There's a there's a theater in there that plays horror movies nonstop, which I but, actually thought was going to be like, because I don't remember ever seeing this movie. Yeah. So I was like, oh, there's going to be an anthology. The minute you show, oh no, a, for a, sure, for sure, a pan in on the movie, you know the the marquee. Sure, I go, oh, they're gonna do some kind of an anthology. It turns thing. out they just play uh, poker upstairs and drink, and then make poor little girls strip for them and stuff yeah. like that. And it's just like, I don't know, man. Here's the thing: there's nothing about this movie I don't like. Could it have been better? Yes. Is is it one of the classics of all time? No. Right. So I'm just gonna give this a. I'll buy it. I liked it quite a bit. The uh, storyline was fine. It wasn't overly complex. Uh, I felt like there was a lot of hilarious like like jokes and stuff like that. Like like when Spike's riding his Harley and then uh, Hoax comes in with his little, what do you call those? Uh, not Togo? Scooter. No, no, Togo are way badass. I'm talking about like Moped. And then he ends up, ru- after the girl, he ends up running into the fence, stuff like that. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny that Kevin Yeager did a great job, like I said, with the uh, special effects. Um I feel like the mo- the best thing about this movie was odd. It was a little weird. There was this yeah. and that. However, um, I don't know. There's one part that freaked me out, though. Not freaked me out, but it really confused me. There's a part when fish start falling from the sky. They rain. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the mother thinks it's a, it's a miracle from God. And That's supposed to be frogs, though. Well, right? no, because that would be evil. But fish, because Jesus is known as a fisher uh, as oh, he's a, of men. Oh, you know? Hence the, the fish on the back of the car. Yeah. So people would say, hey, <laughs> fish. <laughs> but the thing is, that scene went nowhere. It's like that didn't have anything to do with the rest of oh, it. That's very good point. Yeah, but maybe it brought in maybe it brought in the the PI that was gonna figure out what's going on and to pretend to be from a miracle magazine. Maybe that yeah, was the and only, he wasn't. But that was a, a pretty big deal. He wasn't even a PI. He was just a. Uh, like, yeah, I don't he, know what he was. He, he was a magazine guy. He was do, he was trying to do a story. I feel like he lied about that. Oh, and then he was a PI for real though. Because he ended up pulling out the PI badge and all that shit. After. Oh, I don't, I don't shit. know. I don't know. But the thing is, that was a weird scene. That, was, that seemed like an impactful scene that we never referenced after yeah. it happened. And it's like, I don't know, man. I like this movie quite a bit. Is it amazing? No. I still give it a buy. Yeah, I give it a buy, too. I thought it was fun. It's fantastic. And I love that little dude. Uh, for sure. You know, I don't know what he went on to do, but I, I enjoyed him in uh, Fright Night, and I... 
enjoyed him in this. I thought he was great. Evil too. And I really love that guy that's in all those fucking movies. Yeah, I don't the, know his the name, guy who played the. But the, he's yeah. in a. Th- I love character actors. Sure. Yeah, Even if I don't remember their names, you see. Well, him you're not in supposed a, to remember like their Bud names Flowers. You're like that. Buck Flowers I, was in this, wasn't? It? Yeah, he was no. the janitor. Oh no, I don't he was think a, he was. Sorry, sorry, he was in part him two. In a thousand goddamn Buck Flowers movies. was in part two. My bad. You've seen him in a thousand movies. You're like, what the fuck is that guy? He's always around. Of course. And this guy. The place, the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, the 976 uh, number business owner. Or yeah, shit. telemarket but manager. Was he, but what else was he? What was his true identity? That will be decided when you watch the movie, right? You're supposed to spin Oh, that exactly. Second. No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, you did a great job. Yeah, I thought it was fine. I thought it was a good time. So, I've seen this movie a bunch of times. I don't want, I mean, there's nothing more really to say for me. Yeah. But the thing is, is I feel like I didn't do a good job of saying you need to see this movie if you haven't seen it. You even need to see part two if you're into that 80s kind of cheesy, like, like non, not necessarily everything is coherent. Not everything is like, it's not like Saw where there's a story and you know, blah, 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 right. whatever. This is just like fun times. We're throwing is everything the at the back? wall. No, the mom's not back. There's no, the, the only person was Spike who comes back. I don't know, he's on a road uh. trip trying to figure out what's going on. Anyway, that's all I got. I really like this movie. That's it. Yeah, that's all I got, too. All right, so why don't we do this? Why don't we remind you of the question of the episode? And let me remember it real quick from just Julia. What movie did you watch but you had to turn off? Not because you were bored. Not because it was, like, too lame. But there was another reason. Maybe it was too disturbing. Maybe it was too much for your your Fragile very sensitive brains. senses to take. Call that in at 385-351-9273. Three eight five three five one nine two seven three. Don't forget to hit us up on YouTube, on Vimeo, on the Roku. Hey, hit that subscribe yes. on the Corpse Cast. Do you realize we have a, a legitimate YouTube star over here? The Corpse Cast. Subscribe to it. He knows all the shit about YouTube. If you're our friend, you will do that. If you're our friend, you'll do it. Because it just got started. It's still nascent in, in, you know, in its nature. It's Let's in, do it. It's in its nascent uh, stage. Exactly. But that's all I got for this show. That's all I got, too. So for the Corpse Cast, we will catch you guys later.